Now it's time to talk about the process of converting a key to a location. Okay, so uh, an algorithm that converts data of a fixed size uh, data to a fixed size value is referred to as a hash function. So uh, this process of, of taking some key and translating it into a location could be thought of as a type of hash function. So let's take a quick look at the properties of hash functions uh, from Wikipedia. Um, so the Wikipedia article on hash functions uh, describes them just as I did. It's a function that maps data of an arbitrary size to a fixed size value. So in our case, we'll be going to a location that's represented as a, uh, an integer, a positive integer. So the Wikipedia article uh, identifies uh, several different uses of hash functions, including uh, hash tables. Um, but there are more applications than just what we're using them for. Uh, they also describe some properties that are desirable in hash functions. So we've already talked about a couple of these. So efficiency, being able to compute it in essentially constant time for our purposes. Um, and also uh, uh, reliably being reproduced, being deterministic. So if we ask the uh, a hash function to give us a location for a particular item, it should always give us the, the same location for the item. Okay, so... Um, the arrays we've been using are somewhat like tables. So between these two notions, the idea of using a, a function to determine location, which is a type of hash function, and using tables, the common name for these open addressing and separate chaining techniques is hash tables. Um, so in Java, you may have already encountered the data type referred to as a hash map. So again, it uses the uh, concept of a hash function. Okay, so let's talk about this process of hashing or taking some piece of data and uh, eventually converting it into our location for our purposes. So we're going to break this into two separate pieces. So the first piece is taking some key and converting it into an integer. Not necessarily a location, just an arbitrary integer. Um, so this was so important that they baked it into Java. So absolutely every object has a hash code method. Um, so when they sat down to design Java, they knew that this was such an important concept that pretty much everything includes it. Um, so that probably gives you some idea of how important and how useful this can be. So let's take a quick look at the details of uh, what's expected of a hash code function. Okay, so here's the Java documentation uh, that describes the base uh, hash code function. So it returns a hash code value for an object. It's uh, beneficial for hash tables. That's one of the first things they mention, and in particular, the hash map, which is uh, very comparable to our notion of separate chaining. Uh, okay, so there's a general contract. There are things that the hash code function should do or ways it should behave. So it's whenever it's invoked on the same object more than once during the execution of an application, it should consistently return the same integer. Um, so again, we've talked about that earlier. Um, if two objects are equal according to the equals operation, the hash code should return the same value for each uh, for them. Um, okay, so there's this idea of equality and it has some sort of a relationship to the hash code functions. Um, okay, so that's kind of the, the big picture. Um, so the second component here, first we need to take a, a piece of data and convert it into a um, key to an integer, but then we need to actually translate that integer into a location. So we'll look at each of these two different pieces more in depth. First, we'll focus on converting a key to an integer.